you guys, thank you so much for watching um, our you YouTube video. Thank you so much for uh, being no. here. We're so happy no, that we have you guys as part of our family. Show. Bye, sister. Okay, I'm just gonna do it. You guys need me. Like, you act like you don't. I don't need you. Great. You too. You can find a ride home. You can walk home. You can pay find back another your rent. Okay. Who? Anyone else? I have Uber. Great. Have Dixie and Charlie D'Amelio become the biggest fall off of 2023? From getting launched into stardom and basically becoming the queens of TikTok to now barely getting any views on their YouTube and even having one of the worst ever rated reality TV shows, the D'Amelio sisters seem to have nothing more than a viral TikTok dance to offer. So was it all a fluke or they just couldn't truly capitalize on their fame? Join me as we try and figure out if the D'Amelios have become irrelevant. You know what, guys? Ignore your haters. Just keep doing you. So, the D'Amelios lived quite a normal life before their astronomical rise to fame. Their mom was a photographer and a model, and their dad started off as a salesman at a sportswear company. The two got married in 2000 and had Charlie and Dixie and settled down in Norwalk, Connecticut. The sisters lived a comfortable life before all the fame. Their parents were well off, and they even went to a fancy private school in Connecticut. Charlie was a competitive dancer since the young age of three, and she even described their life before TikTok as being being normal. What does it mean when you hear from stars like that and you see them reposting the stuff that you do? It doesn't seem real because I'm like, why Why do they know who? I'm just dancing in my room by myself. Why do they know who I am? Now, around 2019, TikTok was blowing up and being just like every other person on the planet, the sisters downloaded the app. Charlie in particular said her friends encouraged her to join the app and she would soon start posting videos alongside her friends in school. Her first couple of videos were just her lip syncing, but being a dancer, she would soon start posting more and more dance content on her account. A couple of months after joining TikTok, Charlie posted what would arguably be her first viral video. And it was her duetting another creator at Dance With Joy. I am sure Charlie thought she was just posting another regular dance video, but she wasn't prepared for what would happen next. Step, step, flip, flip, shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip, hands go up, hands go down, move your booty all around. The video blew up, earning Charlie over 100,000 followers just three months after she joined TikTok. Charlie was hooked, and so was her newfound audience, so she continued doing what she loved and posted more and more. The TikTok dances and she only kept getting bigger and bigger, earning just over 5 million followers a few months later. I was just blank faced. I didn't know what to say, and then it kind of set in and tears just started rolling down my eyes because this is all I ever really, really wanted to experience. Loves, Charlie's success on TikTok was so baffling that Charlie herself couldn't even give you a reason why she was such a hit. But other than her immense dance talent, Charlie had luck and perfect timing. You see, when Charlie was blowing up on TikTok, it happened to be around the summer of 2019, which meant a lot of people had free time and were on their phones almost all the time. Charlie's videos were also adored by TikTok's algorithm because of the wholesome content it provided. Despite dancing along to whatever viral song was trending at the time, Charlie brought her own flair into her videos, which meant her dance videos stood out right from the start. And that just happened to be the right combination that led Charlie to land on the For You page for millions and millions of people. It also didn't hurt that Charlie's approachability also made her content a safe recommendation for the huge number of kids who happened to be the majority on the app. I taught my sister how to do Renegade so you can learn it too. I'm such a good dancer, but I'm just gonna let her teach me. So <laughs> now one day Charlie and Dixie uploaded a video where they were singing and dancing along to the song Barking by Rams and Stereo Lunch. These two weren't doing anything remarkable in the video. They were just moving along and goofing off while singing the song. So it came as a shock that this video blew up even more catapulting the already famous sisters to greater heights. The video went so viral that it started the Charlie D'Amelio challenge where people would post duets of them overly 
reacting to the bizarrely unremarkable dance video. I mean, it's even a stretch to call it a dance video, but when people would post their duets, they would blow up, meaning that Charlie and Dixie would also blow up further in return. But the challenge didn't stop their loves. Reacting to Charlie's videos became a thing now, and people also became famous for doing this. It was insane. Soon, Charlie became the fastest growing creator on TikTok. So there's so many opportunities that are being presented to me right now. I just want to try everything and see what works. Loves, at this point, Charlie was growing so huge and fast that everything she touched went viral. I am sure we all remember the Renegade challenge that Charlie went viral for. She even started getting called the CEO of the Renegade. Charlie was so viral that BB Rexa and the Jonas Brothers invited her to perform on stage while they were on tour. <laughs> even appeared in a Super Bowl commercial in 2020. Mm. 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 Okay, Boomer. So it was a natural fit for Charlie to want to extend her content outside of TikTok. So in November 2019, Charlie launched her YouTube channel. Hey guys, it's Charlie and I'm super excited to be sharing with you my first ever YouTube video on my YouTube channel. Ow. Now, of course, being as huge as she was, everybody who followed her on TikTok would also do the same on YouTube, right? Well, that wasn't the case. Charlie did get a decent chunk of her followers to subscribe to her YouTube channel, but her first video showed why a large majority of her millions of followers weren't particularly interested in following her content outside of the six seconds of TikTok. Despite earning over 14 million views, Charlie's YouTube video was just hard to watch. Just look at the comments people left on the video. I can't express how awkward this whole thing is. Who else doesn't understand why she's famous? Is it just because she's pretty? Can't believe she got famous by doing only a few steps. What's your least favorite? <laughs> Probably the ones that I can't do or they take too long to learn. Like first I hated Renegade because it took me like such a long time. It was like over a span of like three days. I would like learn a little bit of it and then I was like, okay, I can't do it. And then now I got it and it's like my favorite one. So that I did not like at first. It took such a long time. There's so many like little moves. I don't even know. Y'all, despite having one of the most bizarre intros ever, many people were left wondering if that was all Charlie had to offer. I mean, was it that other than the six second dance videos, didn't she have any other entertaining content? Like was Charlie D'Amelio cringe? After this, many people began mocking her, often making parodies of her cringe intro. And loves, despite being as famous as she was, that cringe title stuck with her video. Now, March 2020, the world was hit by the pandemic and everyone in the world was indoors under lockdown. So naturally people went online because there was nothing else to do. TikTok being the most viral app at the time saw the most love from people with over 850 million people downloading it in 2020 alone. And out of that insane number, 350 million had downloaded the app by March of that year. So naturally, when people downloaded the app, the first person they would get recommended to follow was Charlie. She was the poster girl for TikTok. She represented a dream that TikTok could sell to people. One day you could be a regular kid and the next a star. This love that TikTok had for Charlie soon paid off with her becoming the most followed creator on there and also being the first creator to hit 50 million followers followers. And you know who loves people with 50 million followers? Brands. Charlie soon was getting all sorts of sponsorship deals with everybody. Dunkin' Donuts, Puma, Prada, Valentino. Everyone wanted to work with Charlie and everyone wanted to be associated with her. So the D'Amelio signed a deal with United Talent Agency to help them capitalize on their collective millions and millions of followers. In January, Charlie and the entire D'Amelio family signed with the United Talent Agency to develop various projects, including a possible reality show. People are always talking about how they think our family dynamic is pretty cool. Like they love it when we go live. So that's super fun. I mean, it's really whatever helps like us showcase what we're really like. Y'all, 
the hard work soon paid off. Charlie and Dixie got a podcasting deal and they launched their podcast named Two Chicks. The two sisters had another platform to let their fans into their lives. However, just like Charlie's YouTube channel, the podcast ratings didn't reflect their millions of followers Charlie and Dixie had on TikTok. The podcast, which launched in September of 2020, shortly after Charlie hit the 50 million mark on TikTok, had mixed reviews from the people who bothered to tune in. Just take a look at these reviews. I just love this podcast. It is literally the freaking best. I really enjoyed listening to Charlie very much. And Dixie too. This is a great podcast to listen to, not just for me. It gets boring the more you listen to it. There is something missing. If you like listening to random stuff, this is for you. It is still great. No hate. People will say anything to get likes, whether it's talking about someone's new whatever. They changed in some way. Well, the fame got to them. Or they looked better before. Or they shouldn't have done that. Like, it's not you. Keep your mouth shut. It's not you. What? Baffles me. Loves, those reviews summarize the Demalios perfectly. On TikTok, where people only saw them for a few seconds, they were beloved. But outside that, they always left people feeling like there was something always lacking. To make matters worse, when they partnered up with Morphe to launch their makeup line, it didn't go down so well with a lot of people giving it horrible reviews. I am so tired of celebrities coming out with skincare and makeup products for a quick money grab. I feel like we have enough skincare and makeup brands. I mean, at least Charlie admitted that her skincare products were a big flop instead of faking it and having the products sold. Unlike other influencers who are actually selling people products which are horrible. Loves, it seemed as though they received a lot of love on TikTok, but outside of TikTok, the expectations from their huge following never lived up to it. I mean, just look at the numbers their various YouTube channels get. Charlie in particular had the numbers to enable her to just get these opportunities handed to her without even trying. The opportunities came without Charlie breaking a sweat, but her followers didn't really have her back outside of TikTok. However, that wasn't the case for Dixie. She was popular indeed, but she didn't have Charlie's numbers. She almost got famous from just being associated with Charlie. Loves, remember this comment from their podcast reviews. I really enjoyed listening to Charlie very much and Dixie too. Well, this seems to perfectly capture Dixie's difficult journey. I know it's not fair to compare the sister, but the world always just seems to think of her as just Charlie's sister. Dixie she has always seemed to be in Charlie's shadow, and to her credit, she has always worked hard to try and shake off that tag. I get, like, for you, it must be really exciting because, like, I always came in first, and, like, yeah. now you finally have your time to shine. No, I think it's so cute that you riding on my coattails, like, really worked out for you. No, I mean, like, that was your whole life. I mean, two years compared to 18, it's, like, really different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, while all the brands were chasing Charlie, Dixie decided to carve her own path away from Charlie, other than her podcast with her sister. She started starred on the show Attaway General, and just like the other venues that the D'Amelios had going on outside of YouTube, Attaway General was a bust. We've been here five seconds. Studies show we form lasting impressions about others within seconds of meeting. So I can't be with you in a closet when I meet Dr. Henry. He's the most brilliant surgeon in the state. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the same accolades as a father. The show was completely unwatchable, with cringy dialogue and a boring plotline. It got bombarded with bad reviews, earning it a rating of 1 out of 10 on IMDb, and that's just because you can't give a zero rating. However, what stood out the most from season 1 Dixie was that on the show, despite her theater background, well... Couldn't act. Well, to be fair, all the people on that show couldn't act, but Dixie was the biggest name on there, so she got most of the scrutiny. Now, of course, Dixie quickly learned Attaway General wasn't her thing, and she left to pursue her music, and it must be said that she got off to a mixed start. Her debut single, Be Happy, was a hit, gaining well over 100 million views on YouTube alone. However, the reviews of the song weren't all that nice. She's got a hidden talent, let it be hidden. This song hits hard on Mew. No auto-tune, no mixing, just just straight trash. Not gonna lie, people online can be mean, but Dixie didn't let this get her down. She continued doing her music and she even launched the early late show with Dixie D'Amelio, where she hosted a couple of musicians and TikTok influencers. Dixie 
finally seemed to have gotten something that she liked, so she continued releasing more and more songs, even featuring the likes of Wiz Khalifa, Lil Mosey, and Liam Payne. Now, despite not being able to replicate their TikTok success on other platforms, the D'Amelios as a whole were still very much a success. So naturally, they gave people what they wanted by launching a new show on their family YouTube channel called Dinner with the D'Amelios. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the D'Amelio family YouTube channel. And tonight, we are starting our brand new episode of Dinner with the D'Amelios, where we invite a person. Actually, we didn't invite anyone because we have no idea who's coming but we're gonna have a special guest tonight. They're going to sit right there and we're going to have dinner, get to know someone, and we have no idea who it is. So keeping in tune with all their different ventures outside of TikTok, their new YouTube show was horrible. To give you guys a perspective of how badly that first episode went, they have never made another episode since. By the way, the show is about the D'Amelios sitting down and having dinner with different guests, and their first and only guest was James Charles. After the episode was uploaded to YouTube, it quickly received a lot of backlash, mainly because of how Dixie and Charlie behaved on the show. It's, uh. <laughs> it's very classic to put a paella. It's part of what they would call the Mari Montana, you know? the sea of the land. And, uh... Dixie refused to eat the food that was prepared by the chef, at one point even mocking the dish, which consisted of snails, which was a delicacy in Spain. Dixie even was gagging all over the place and pretending to puke at one point. What angered people the most wasn't that she was making fun of Spanish food, it was that despite making it clear that she was dusted by the food, at one point she was seen picking her nose and eating the I'm about going to law school for that exact reason, just because I find that there could be someone that has a better lawyer, especially in the criminal side, gets out of a certain situation and the one that doesn't have a good look. The show in general was a complete mess with Charlie and Dixie seeing disinterested about being there in the first place. They were acting very unprofessional and everybody noticed this. If I act like Dixie and Charlie during the whole meal, I will be given a smack from my mom. Dixie's reaction to the food is the same reaction I have to their TikToks. Thank you for watching the first ever and most likely the last ever <laughs> episode of Dinner with the D'Amelios. Basically, the dinner was a disaster and it didn't help that Charlie and Dixie were renowned for being cringe. This only damaged their image even more. It seemed like no one wanted to see them outside of TikTok and the backlash from this video was so much that Charlie lost over 1 million followers because of it. To make matters worse, in the video, Charlie commented on hitting 100 million followers a year after hitting a million followers and this rubbed people off the wrong way. In their eyes, Charlie saw them as nothing but just being a number. Since they are role models on such a big platform, they should be called out when they need to be humbled a little because you see this happen all the time. People get really famous, a lot of followers really quickly. They think they're entitled to 100 million. They complain that they only have 95 million followers. They complain that they have a personal chef and it's just unbecoming. Y'all, things got so bad after that video that Charlie was even getting bullied because of it. She even had a breakdown while trying to explain herself and people flipped the story and said she was crying because she lost followers. But the truth was that she got emotional trying to explain that she isn't spoiled like people think. Like that's not okay. You can hate on me for whatever I've done, but the fact that all of this is happening because I a misunderstanding, like I just feel like that's not okay. And if this is the community that I'm in and the community that I put myself in, I don't know if I want to do that anymore. Loves. Dixie and Charlie just further damaged their reputation and people even began saying that they didn't deserve anything they got because of their fame. But besides that scandal, Charlie was still able to surpass the 100 million mark just a few days later, becoming the first ever person to do so. Now the D'Amelios remained relatively chilled with everyone doing their thing. Dixie seemed to find some success with her music, but Charlie didn't quite seem to know where she stood outside TikTok. She was jumping from thing to thing, trying to find herself. In September 2022, the D'Amelios launched their new show on Hulu, aptly named The D'Amelio Show. It was a reality TV show aimed at giving people a closer look into their lives. Unlike their other stuff, the first season of their show was pretty well received, so much so that it earned an MTV award. It showed how the family was dealing with all of the changes and shocks of being a viral success. Thank you so much for this incredible honor. When we moved to LA as a family and agreed to do this show, 
We never imagined we'd be standing on a stage like this, accepting this incredible award. On the other hand, the second season didn't live up to the expectations. It showed the challenges the sisters were having after already being famous. Dixie had found her place in music, but Charlie was still hopping from project to project. So it came as a shock to Dixie when she learned that Charlie was gonna start doing music. To make matters worse, Dixie was getting lied to, being told Charlie was taking acting classes. When Charlie releases music, it's going to cause a lot of drama for me. I don't think you're gonna care, Dixie, honestly. I was caught off guard and then expected to be like, oh my God, this is so perfect. You know what? Why don't you put this song on my album? We could do it together. Like, that's how they wanted me to react. And I'm like, guys, no. This naturally didn't sit well with Dixie. She had spent time and effort to establish herself as being her own person. Now, her more popular sister was just going to take it from her and reduce her to being just Charlie's sister. Loves, this was just a kick in the face to Dixie. Now, adding salt to injury, Charlie released just one song and simply just seemed to get bored with it, just like she did with all the other things she seems to do. What must have hurt more for Dixie is just how easily she could do things since she had value vastly more followers, while she seemed to work harder just to get recognized as more than Charlie's sister. Loves, this music thing caused a huge rift in the sisters' relationship that was clearly documented in the third season of the show. The two couldn't even stand each other at this point. To make matters worse, the whole show's ratings were tanking so bad, reaching an all-time low rating of just 2.8 out of 10, making it one of the lowest rated shows ever. Basically, other than their sibling drama, the D'Amelios seemed to be struggling just to stay relevant. They are too normal. This is completely fine for regular people, but for celebs and influencers who put their lives out there, normal isn't a good thing. The normality that made them stand out when they were becoming famous seems to be the thing that is also bringing them down. Just like their TV show and Dixie's music and Charlie's YouTube career, they start moderately strong since they were normal people most people could relate to, but now that they're famous, people want to see chaos and drama. And other than a few minor scandals like when Charlie recently received backlash for dressing up as a Walmart employee, the D'Amelios just aren't that chaotic. Do y'all think Charlie and Dixie will ever replicate their TikTok success anywhere else? Or should they change themselves and bring more drama into their lives in order to become bigger? Let me know in the comments down below. Till next time, bye loves!